Hello everyone, welcome into Fatty's Feast where we make the best food you'll ever eat without leaving your backyard. My name is Josh. Today we're gonna to be doing an experiment to see if the way I've always cooked my briskets isn't actually the best way. Let's get started. So for the longest time, and even as far as back as I've been cooking briskets and way before me, you always wrap your brisket. But lately there's been this new thing in barbecue where people are questioning, do you really need to wrap your brisket? And the answer obviously is no. It's not completely necessary, but it's sort of one of those things that's always been accepted as the normal way to do it. So wrapping briskets came into popularity because of the stall. The stall is when the meat stops cooking because it's sweating out all the moisture and it's cooling off the surface. And wrapping your brisket allows your meat to push through the stall and sort of save some time so you're not screwing around for hours waiting for your meat to push through that. And originally a lot of people wrapped in foil, but butcher paper is really the accepted thing to use while wrapping briskets. Now me personally, I wrap my brisket after we get through the stall. To get through the stall, I just bump up my temperatures and just push it through. And then afterwards, once the bark looks great, we have great fat render, we have great color, I wrap it. So since I wrap after we reach the stall, you might be asking, well, why would you wrap anyway? And that's a great question. There's three reasons for that. The first thing is you want to decrease the cooking time. Now, if we have our brisket unwrapped, it's obviously going to take longer. So if we wrap it up in some butcher paper, the hope is, and what usually happens, is you'll push through and shave off a few hours of cooking time. The second reason we do that is we want to preserve the bark. Now, if you wrap in foil, you're going to have a pot roasty consistency to your bark. It's going to be soft. It's not going to be as appealing. And the reason for that is because when you wrap and foil, it will preserve all those juices and sort of make your brisket soggy. Wrapping in butcher paper allows for you to let the brisket breathe a little bit and therefore keeps your bark nice and firm and intact. And I guess one more reason is because you don't want your brisket to get too smoky. Now, your brisket really stops absorbing smoke flavor after about, I would say, six hours or so. But realistically speaking, the longer you have it exposed to smoke, you're going to have fire and smoke buildup that gets on there and whatnot. So it's one of those things where I've always believed that if I don't wrap my brisket, it's going to dry out possibly. And it's also going to have too much smoke flavor at the end of the day. So with this experiment today, we're seeing if I'm wrong. And who knows barbecue better than me, but the experts at Goldie's Barbecue in Texas. They're the ones that are making this method the real way to go, I guess you could say. Wrapping in butcher paper was made very popular by Aaron Franklin, also in Texas, in Austin. These guys at Goldie's are based right outside of Dallas, and they're just making waves in the barbecue community by the way they smoke their briskets. And they swear by the fact that they do not wrap until the absolute end. There's no wrapping prior to the stall, there's no wrapping after the stall, it's once the brisket's actually done and when they're putting it to rest is when they actually wrap. And they have made Texas Monthly number one for however many months it's been, I have no idea, but they're very popular and they know a thing or two about barbecue. So we're gonna see if we can get similar results today and if wrapping is a complete waste of time. Now there's two things I wanna bring up to you before we take a look at our brisket. And yes, the brisket's already on. But first of all, this is not a how to cook a brisket video. If you want to learn how to cook a brisket, I will put a link here for my part one of my four part series on how to smoke a brisket. I go through literally everything I do. And this video specifically talks about the prep work, the slicing, or I should say the trimming, the seasoning, all that good stuff. So if you're you're a beginner and want to learn how to cook a brisket the best possible way, you're going to want to check that out. And the second thing is if you're doing an experiment, such as we are today, we're just seeing if not wrapping our brisket will render better results in the end, you only want to experiment with one thing at a time. So today I'm not out here not wrapping my brisket and changing my seasoning and changing my wood and changing the temperature I'm, I'm cooking at because you're not going to know at the end of the day what made your brisket better or unfortunately worse sometimes. You just wanna to stick to one thing at a time. Every time you smoke a brisket, if you wanna try something, try a new rub, see if that works. Try not wrapping, try cooking at different temperatures. See what makes the best possible result for you and then you can stick to that or you can say, ah, that wasn't as great as I thought it would be, we're not gonna do that again. So that's all I wanted to say before we begin. This brisket behind me, which you can't see yet, but we're gonna take a look in a second, has been on the smoker for approximately three hours at 250-ish degrees. Once again, that's what I always do. I add smoke flavor for the first three hours cooking at a lower temperature. And this brisket, as you can imagine, was prepped the same exact way I do all my briskets. Now, one 
One thing I did notice about this brisket is there was some iffy butchering. We had some bald spots and we had some slices taken out, which hopefully won't be a big deal. But we trimmed this bad boy up like we do all the others. We got a quarter inch thick layer of fat right on top. And this one was a quite fatty brisket. Once again, this is a prime brisket, the fattiest you can get besides Wagyu, pretty much. We did our usual mustard binder and we seasoned with my super secret brisket rub, which I will put a link for in the description so you can make it yourself at home. We threw this bad boy on the smoker once again at 250 degrees around noon today and we let it take its course. That being said, let's take a look at where we're at. So this brisket so far looks really good. Nice, even cooking all around. I don't see any areas that are drying out. It looks nice and flat. I think without a doubt, this is some of the best results I've had within the first three hours. There's a lot of fat in there, as you can see. I would say we cut about five pounds off this brisket. And once again, it is a prime, so it's not surprising, but that thing was chuck full when we started. Fire's looking nice and toasty. So I just bumped this up a little bit because we want to get our temps up to about 260 degrees-ish now. We're gonna to start to really form a nice bark as we always do. And then we're gonna run 260, 265 until we get to the stall, which should be in about three more hours. So I don't need to do anything to this. We'll just keep it going. Now, one main reason I wanted to do this experiment today is because recently, I think like the last three briskets I've cooked, I tend to wrap and then it tends to take forever. So the first brisket I ever cooked on this pit, it took about equal time pre-wrap and post-wrap, which made absolutely no sense to me. But it's not this smoker because I've had the same thing happen on my Brazos. I'll take the brisket off after about nine hours after we get through the stall, and then for whatever reason, after I wrap, it still takes five, six, seven, eight more hours. Each brisket I've cooked lately, no matter what the weight has been, has taken at least 16 hours. So I'm very curious today, if we do not wrap this brisket, which this is one of the larger boys I've cooked in a while, I wanna see if we're gonna have any huge stall or any just, issues when it comes to finishing this on time. And we're gonna let it rest in the warming trays like we always do, but like I said, it's not this smoker that's causing the issues. I think it's just the cuts of meat, and they've all been choice briskets, all from Costco. This one's a prime, which I've, I'm not really worried about that because I've done prime briskets before, that's what I prefer. But I don't know if it's just the cut of meat and I've just been having bad luck when choosing briskets and maybe this one will work out better, or if it's just the temperature change when I take it out and wrap it. I really don't know, we're gonna see though. So I'll check back when I wanna do something else. It'll be a few. Okay, so we're taking a look at this. Let's drain this bad boy off. Got a beautiful bark forming. I love this thing so far. This is great. Got some fat render down here. This bark looks really good. Let's take a look at the underside. Oh yeah, looking sweet. Some fat render right there. Now notice we're not really drying out at all. We got a little bit right here. That's actually not even like crispy or anything. It's looking pretty damn good so far. So I'll put her back and put her right about here. And this is how much we've shrunk so far. All right, so let me grab an internal temp here. 162, 163 in the middle, and this should be 179. Okay, so we're a little bit more ahead in the flat. I'm not surprised. It's definitely nowhere near tender. So we're gonna say we're about 160, which means it's time for the stall. So I am going to carefully thread another Thermalworks probe through here. Can. And then we'll put this bad boy smack dab in the middle. And I'm just waiting until it drops a little bit to the lowest temp. The farther we get in, the less temperature we have. So 152, that's where we're going to stop. So that's probably right about down to here. And we'll shut her down again. So for six hours in, we're doing pretty well. So we're just maybe not about at the stall, but probably about at the stall. Either way, I wanted to put that probe in so we can see when we do hit that stall and when we push out of it. But just because we're right at that point where we should be stalling out, we're gonna bump our temps up to 275, 280, even 290. Another thing to note is I've been checking this thing every hour since we last checked in just to see if I need to spray. I haven't put any foil around the end where the point is, and I also haven't really sprayed much. I've done a spritz here and there just to prevent it from drying out, but this thing is cooking so freaking well. There's barely any crisping or anything like that, and the bark looks beautiful. It's nice and soft so far, so we're doing a really great job. So let's go ahead and bump our temps up. It's a big boy right here. Let's see how this one works out. So this thing is catching pretty quick because it's been on the top of here for a while. But one thing we're going to keep in mind as we head through this stall, I want to keep checking every hour to see if I need to spray. 
Because we're not wrapping the brisket, it might dry out. It's got a better chance of drying out. So wrapping will become more of a thing the longer we progress into this cook. It's looking great. So we'll close this down, we'll check back once we've gotten through the dreaded stall. We are approximately nine hours in, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this freaking thing, beautiful. What I'm loving right now is we got some great fat render. Oh, I don't even wanna do that because I don't wanna burn my hand, but look at that, it just gives. I'm not pushing too deep. Got some great crust up top. And one thing I wanted to note is the amount of pooling. I mean, this brisket is not pooling much. We got some over here, but it's not bad compared to other ones I've done. Look at that yellowness of the fat. That's what we're looking for right there. So let's take some internal temps. This is already giving like butter right now. We're at 177. Back here, 196. This is getting a lot of heat right now. So this area is pretty much done. But then over here, 195. I'm a little concerned over here because we're only at 168, and this right here is very tough still. So I'm gonna take this probe out, give it a nice tip up, get some of those juices off. Bottom looks really good. Like, like look at this freaking thing. This is gorgeous, look at the juices flowing off. I wanna get this side a little more tender, and I've literally never done this before. So I'm gonna put this side toward the fire. Like I said, this back end here is very tender already. This is near done. This needs to be tenderized a little bit more. That's some nice, I mean, it's not even drying out. I'm gonna spray this right here. This looks really good. Ooh, it's gonna make some nice burn ends. Let me put my probe right here. I'm just gonna spray up top here, just this side, and then a little bit on this side. So we're at the point, if we were doing this the way I always do, where we would wrap it. We got nice bark formation for the most part, except for that one side over there. I'm not sure what the deal is there. We just got some pooling of juices. We haven't had a really good bark form there, but hopefully putting that place toward the fire, that whole side will crisp up that bark a little bit. So because we're not wrapping, the main goal now is to make sure we don't burn anything. We want to maintain a good bark. We want to maintain a good fire, even temperatures. We're gonna stay at about 175. And the really cool thing is we're just over nine hours in, like I said. I'm very happy with the way this is going. I mean, in past cooks where I've wrapped, we've waited till 12 hours to wrap. And it's all about how the meat is. So it's about the bark formation, it's about the fat rendering, it's about the internal temperature. And in my case, typically it's about when we get past the stall. This stall went pretty quick. It was uh, about 150 when it stalled out, which is typically pretty low. Usually you're around 160-ish, in my experience at least. But we were at 150. We were there for about an hour to an hour and a half, and then we pushed through. Right now we are at 49 degrees. Hold on, I never put this back in, I suck. There we go, that looks that looks better, okay. Yeah, so we're at 161 now. We've gotten past the stall. I didn't want to really open this up and screw with it until we were definitely past it. And as you can see, the temperatures are a little uneven around the brisket itself, and we have some very tender areas and we have some very hard areas. So like I said, hopefully pushing that heat this way toward the brisket itself will make this go a little quicker. Now I might actually move the brisket toward the fire a little more just to help it out a little bit so I don't have to go through so much wood. We'll see what happens because the hot spot is right here currently. But we're just gonna chill out and have some more beers and enjoy the nice weather we're having here in Connecticut. So we will check back soon. All right, so at this point it was 13 hours in at one in the morning, so I didn't wanna record my annoying voice outside and wake my neighbors up. But this brisket was coming along beautifully. We still had that pooling up top on the flat, which was annoying. But look at how that just gives. We had a nice crispy bark on the outside. It wasn't drying out at all. It still looked like absolute magic. And I was so thrilled that it was coming along this great. Notice when I tempt it, it was about 190. So it came along pretty quickly in that area that wasn't as tender. But the thing that shocked me is when I turned it, I was afraid it would overcook some of the other areas in the point, and it really didn't. They stayed around 203, 205 degrees and just chilled there. There was no direct heat, so it worked out very well. The point was beautiful, it just gave like butter. I was so excited with the results. Feeling around the outside, no concern to me, everything felt great. The only thing is when I lift this up here, you'll notice that it cracked up top. I was a little afraid I overcooked it, turned out, had nothing to worry about. So. I let it go for about another hour or two until that area was tender and we took it off. Oh, oh, oh. This is gorgeous, people. Like, I don't know how else to describe this thing. I'm beyond excited right now. This took 15 hours, which is 
pretty much on pace for what I thought it would take because it was a 15 pound brisket, just a bit over. But <sighs> I'm so happy. Let's take a closer look. All right, so first off, checking for doneness. This thing is freaking butter. Like I have no resistance anywhere here. It, it's butter. There, there's nothing, there's no give whatsoever. I love that. The second thing is I'm not shit housed, which is awesome, but I do have a bush light here. It's 3 a.m. Delicious, I'm still in a good mood. We have a nice crispy bark here, and that's what we're sort of looking for with this particular method, if you will. Got some crispiness on the edges here, but the bark is nice and set. Aesthetically looking, this is probably one of the best briskets I've ever cooked in my entire life. It didn't shrink up from the flat section to the point or anything like that. Sometimes I've had briskets that will shrink up a little bit, but like we're right in the middle here. This looks good, but you can just see the juice is oozing out of this. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, I can. That's all that matters, I guess. Well, I wanna show you guys, but this thing is just, it's a beauty. It's a meteorite, it's amazing. Let's go to the next step. So let me take this and move it out of the way real quick. Where am I putting this? Uh, okay, yeah. uh, no, I don't wanna put it there. So this is the one thing that concerns me a little bit because I don't want the bark to be soggy in the morning, but the Goldie's method is resting it in foil. I never use foil in my brisket, so we're gonna see how this goes. That's probably good. So I got myself some beef tallow here. This is a lot of beef tallow. I can use this for eggs. I cook eggs with this every morning, so I'm really happy to have this. If you've never rendered beef tallow down before, you can use this as a substitute for butter for literally, well, I shouldn't say anything, but you know, burgers or other meat products or eggs. I love eggs, but this beef towel ain't solidified yet, so I'm gonna pour this right down here. I'm gonna do a pretty good amount. I'm really gonna focus on where the point is going. That's what Goldie's does. It's beef towel, it's delicious. Just eat it with a spoon. I'm just kidding, don't do that, that's disgusting. You don't want that clogging your arteries. Let's not do that. Then I'll take my bad boy of a brisket, put it right down here. I just burned my hands, that's pretty much okay. I don't care. And then we will take our bad boy of a brisket and just wrap it up like so. Very simple. I'm just gonna get all that beef tallow right in. This is a sloppy wrap job, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not cooking it anymore, so. Still have a little bit up top here, which is unfortunate. Good thing I have another piece. Actually, I might just rip another one off. There we go. Not a big deal. We have ways around our screw ups here on Fatty's Feast. I'm not perfect, no one is. So if you think you're perfect, you're not. And there we go. It's beautiful, just like I intended. So we're gonna stick this bad boy in the warming tray overnight. Probably gonna let it rest for 13 to 15 hours, depending on what time I wanna eat this for dinner tomorrow night. We'll rest it at about 150 let it do its thing. I'm very curious how the bark's gonna turn out because the point of this is to soften up the bark a little bit, just cause it's very crispy right now. I like a crispy bark. In this particular case, I think this is probably, definitely, maybe, absolutely, that's just, yeah, ridiculous. The best brisket I've ever cooked so far, aesthetically. But we'll put it in the warming trays and I will see you guys tomorrow at like dinner time or something. Very excited. I'm gonna go get a nice night's sleep and I'm very happy that this this did not take, I'm stuttering now, maybe I shouldn't have drank that much. I'm very happy this did not take all night and I'm not up at seven in the morning. So, sleep tight, I'll see you soon. And we're back after 14, this is probably actually almost 15 long grueling hours of me absolutely doing nothing with it sitting in my trays. We have a brisket. So let's take a look and see what we got.
So here we are. This thing looks amazing. I stand by what I said last night when I put this bad boy in the warming trays. This is, I don't think that's done. Hold on. This is one of the most aesthetically pleasing briskets I've ever made, I think, personally, probably ever. And the bark, like just second to none, it's softened a little bit. I do have some crispy bits on the edge and that's gonna happen because we didn't wrap it. So, oh, we wrapped it at the end, but we didn't wrap it in the cooking process. So that makes for some very good burnt ends, I hope. So let me, I'm just gonna try this little, like this is a little burnt piece here. Wow. Okay, I like that. That was done pretty quickly actually through the cook. And one thing I noticed, I think I mentioned it last night, but parts of the brisket were done before the other parts. Holding under its own weight, that's good. Pull test, right apart, awesome. Oh, it's got some smoke flavor. So good, good amount of pepper on here using that rub that I always use. This is uh, this is pretty pretty freaking good. Now I have my two friends here with me who have had my briskets before. So I unfortunately didn't make a second brisket because I'm not loaded and didn't want to spend a hundred something bucks on two briskets to have that go to waste because I don't have a vacuum sealer or anything. So I'm going off memory here. I've made enough briskets in my life where I remember what my briskets taste like. This is uh, this is pretty good so far. And I made some other cuts here. This one, let's get some point. See, that's a little soupy, but I don't think it's gonna be bad. I mean, that's just the fat that rendered down. This is a prime brisket. That fat, that intermuscular fat is just, oh my God, amazing. Rendered fat melts in your mouth, very crunchy. Surprisingly, a little less smoke flavor on there. I don't know. And then a burnt end. That's got some flavor on it too. I, I like that. We have a lot of juice here. We have like amazing juice. So I'm gonna put that when we cut this and slice it up for serving. These guys can take some juice with them. So juicy. All in all, I'm shocked at the fact that this took just as long as if I wrapped a brisket. I said 15 hours, it took 15 hours. Remember when you're timing a brisket, if you're doing it at 250 or 275, it's an hour per pound prior to you cutting the fat off and all that stuff. So it took just as long as I thought it would. It worked out very well. The stall, not as long as other briskets I've done. I think the more fat you have, so if you get a prime brisket, the less of a stall you're gonna have. With choice briskets, I don't know why they take as long as they do. It is what it is. The flavor itself, it's not at all overwhelming with smoke. One of the fears I had when it comes to not wrapping, because when you wrap, you prevent additional smoke flavor or dirty fire or whatever from getting on your brisket, even though it stops absorbing smoke flavor after hour six. You just don't want all that crap on there. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. We didn't waste any time. Smoke flavor is great. This is the best bark I've ever had. I think in my briskets. I, I'm sort of curious if I wrapped it in butcher paper and then put it to rest, how that would work. But with the foil, it didn't stick or anything like that. This is a very easy process. So I might stick with this from now on. We'll see, I'll do a few more before I like tell you guys, yeah, absolutely, you have to do it this way. But I think this is a very good way of doing it. I think Goldie's is onto something, if you didn't know, because they've been in Texas monthly as number one for eons now. So maybe Goldie's has it figured out and we're all wrong when it comes to wrapping our briskets. We will see as time goes on. Anyway, that'll do it for this episode of Fatty's Feast. If you like what you saw, please like this video, get this content out to more people, and please leave a comment on things you wanna see me make on the smoker. If you're interested in learning about how to cook a brisket in more detail, I'm gonna put a video right here for brisket part one. You can check that out. And then over here is gonna be a video specifically tailored to your taste. You're gonna like it, so definitely check it out. Right in the middle, if you love the average face, bearded, bald, diabetic, whatever, you can subscribe. And until next time, everyone, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay hungry.